We begin with the dumbest Super Bowl loss ever. And the dumbest play calling, not merely in Super Bowl history, nor just in NFL history, but maybe the dumbest play calling since Coach Robert E. Lee sent his running back, George Pickett, into the stacked northern defensive line at the Gettysburg Bowl in 1863. It's enough to make one scream. You decide to burn as much of the remaining 61 seconds of the Super Bowl by passing from the one kind of towards the goal post to the busiest part of the field just to set up a rush that never happens because you just threw away the Super Bowl. And you've taken Joe Pisarczyk and Bob Gibson off the eternal hook. And this is after your idiot wide receiver gets a 15-yard unsportsmanlike for a touchdown celebration so gross it makes Marshawn Lynch's crotch grab look about as innocent as the opening credits of Sesame Street. And this is before your idiot defenders decide to pick a fight with the Patriots in the waning seconds of the season, which not only makes you losers look like undisciplined losers, even worse, it makes the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots look like the victims here. Man! And then there was the gibberish that came out of Pete Carroll's mouth defending the play call. You know, we, we decided to call another call. I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so. We could have run it and got stuffed. We could have run it and scored. We could have scored against their goal line as well. That, I know that could have happened. Because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have that. It just wasn't a, a great football thought at the time. Great football was let's make sure we match up properly so that we can have our best chance to run it in the score. I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as. In retrospect, I could, could have easily run it and we wouldn't be talking about this. Our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries. I don't know. I don't know what would happen. But this is what happened. So we will be able to build up our future for our children. Anybody who tells you there are two sides to this, like it's a news debate between somebody who tells you the moon is a natural satellite orbiting the Earth and somebody else who tells you, no, it's made out of pie. There aren't two sides to this. They're wrong. Not only that, this was fatal. You lose a Super Bowl due to bad planning, panic, idiocy, and a really bad pass, and there is only one solution. Blow the Seattle Seahawks up. There are no other options. History, cruel, remorseless, but inevitable history, tells us that no franchise recovers from this. Ask the Tennessee Titans. Ask Kevin Dyson. Blow them up. Fire Pete Carroll. Fire the offensive coordinator, Daryl Bevel. In fact, I would have fired him during the Lombardi Trophy presentation and made him get his own ride back to Seattle. Trade Russell Wilson. Clean it out. The franchise never lives this down. Bye. Felicia. And of course, even before all that, this was a Super Bowl full of symbolism. In the year the NFL was forced to become conscious of head trauma, Julian Edelman either played immediately after a concussion, or if Bill Belichick was right about how he would have got, not gone back in had the doctors not cleared him, and the Associated Press report was right, and he did pass the concussion test, he did the best impression of post-concussion symptoms ever by anybody who didn't have a concussion. And all of this was in the wake of Roger Goodell's audible hallucination Friday, which the NFL billed as his State of the League speech, in which he actually claimed to be accessible to the media on literally a daily basis, rather than, you know, the reality that he goes to his office every morning, then takes a nap until 6 when they send him home, and he is less accessible to the media on an annual basis than, you know, the groundhog Punxsutawney Phil. I understand the obligation of my job to meet with the media. I don't know whether I meet with them in a press conference every week, but I'm available to the media uh, almost every day of my job professionally. Uh, so we, we try to make ourselves available on a very regular basis. It is my responsibility, it's my job, and I will do that. So he says that on Friday. So what happens 48 hours later at the league's biggest stage, just before the dumbest play calling since the charge of the Light Brigade into the Valley of Death in the Crimean Bowl of 1854, where he could talk to all the reporters in the universe all at the same time by going on with my friend Bob on NBC. In the midst of all this, we requested an interview with Commissioner Roger Goodell to talk about Deflategate, domestic violence, player safety, and the many other pressing issues facing the league. The commissioner declined. And so we move on to Mike Florio, who has the latest on the Deflategate story. 
Goodell wouldn't be interviewed by Costas on NBC. NBC, which is paying approximately $642 million a year just to get one Super Bowl every three years. And, and, and they passed on that play. They let a guy play with a head at $642 million. No interview. The Iraq everywhere, such as U.S. American. Interview wouldn't do. Excuse me. I'll be right back. It, it, it wouldn't do the interview. National television, national television. I, I don't. It's just unbelievable. It's a madness. It's a complete madhouse out there. I'm not going to leave you alone. Pass the ball. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Don't just leave me alone for a few minutes. I'm not going to leave you alone. We're just we're, 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 we're waste the time. We're just stop the time. We're just going to hold on to the ball. That's what we're going to do. We're going to hold on to the ball. Just, we're going to wait for it. Pass the ball. Pass the ball. Pass the ball. What comes passing is that you can't have your energy. Pass the ball. I'm not going to leave you alone because you can't just pass the ball in every situation. You're like I need to do some more side. You said, Good Bell doesn't do an interview with NBC for $154 million. I can't believe it. Why? 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 We'll be right back.